Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Briar Hangdahl Windwalker. Unsan and I were discussing this. Apparently, you are familiar with One Finger Zen, but are you familiar with Three Finger Zen? I'm going to uh, say a verse, and that doesn't mean we're we're ending our meeting this evening. This is a, a preface to something. Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes swiftly by, and opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Strive to realize your true nature. Do not squander your time by night or day. Somehow, Bryant, Johnson, and I had an email discussion this week about that verse, and no one seems to remember how it got started or who asked the question, and Johnson was doing some research, and, and of course, it's usually attributed to Dogen. Uh, he found an interesting sutta that it, it may well be from. But I've been thinking a lot about that. Obviously, um, well, we were discussing it, and uh, as interestingly happens at times, things follow along with that pattern. Uh, one of my employees' father passed away at the end of the week last week, and I was I was doing a company notice uh, about that today and, and gathering information. And obviously, we've all been talking about family members and illnesses and the world. And I also came across an interesting story, and you, you all know by now that I love my stories. Sung San told this uh, at one point. I don't know if it exists somewhere else, but I, I saw his version in, uh, in uh, a written form of a talk he gave. And he's talking about the Zen master Chun Song who was one of our famous iconoclasts and one day walked to the head of the hall and sat in front of the monks, said, Buddha is a number one stupid man. And everybody just stared at him. Not something you're used to hearing in a, in a Buddhist meditation hall. So he tried to explain because they, they didn't get it. And he said, everybody already has enlightenment. Nothing. And he said, why did he sit six years, see a star, and then get enlightened? That's stupid. If you see a star, you get enlightened now. And everybody just looked at him and they didn't understand. And they, where is this star? Here, here, here is the star. And they still didn't understand. They're looking for the star. What star is he talking about? The magical star. And so he slammed his Zen stick down on the floor and he yelled, guts! When he did that, he woke up a dog that had been sleeping under the floor. And the dog jumped up, hit its head on the floor, and yelped. And Shun Song said, ah, the dog is the only one here that's enlightened. Now, we could go off into uh, discussing whether that's a reference to whether a dog has Buddha nature or not. It seems like we could disprove some theories on this, but I like this story, and, and I like it together with what is normally our parting words because it is of supreme importance and the thing about 
opportunities to awaken is that they're boundless. Despite our mind and what it does, it's not something that you wait to happen the next time you sit for meditation. It's not something you wait to happen the next time you're in a peaceful, quiet place. Awakening happens in a sunrise, in the star, in the death of a family member. Opportunities to awaken happen with each breath we take as we walk. But our mind, we describe it as the monkey mind. And I, I think of a website I saw once. I, I, I'm trying to remember. I think it was called Tumble or something. One, one of my children was messing with it. And it was a website search engine. And you'd hit a button and it would randomly find another website. And you'd hit a button and it would randomly find another website. And you just do this for entertainment, apparently. You just hit enter and let it click from one site to another. And maybe something's neat, and maybe something's not. And at one point I caught I, my daughter and she had electronic bubble wrap on the screen to the computer and was clicking and popping the bubble wrap with the mouse. So of course, since I'm, I'm a, a world-class butt buster, I told her she'd better off to click the X button and be done with it. But that's what we have to do with our mind if, if we want to take the opportunities to awaken. We're just always in that mode, like with, with awakening in, in a normal day. You know, you hit the snooze button, five more minutes, Dad, I promise, five more minutes. We go through our days, through our lives, through decades, hitting that snooze button because later or tomorrow or next year, because right now I'm really angry and I want to cling to that anger and own it and, and control it and keep it here. So we have to stop. We have to allow the mud to settle. We have to take the opportunities. We have to take the moments. We have to notice the moments in order to take them. And that involves mindfulness. So while we're always talking about, okay, the sutra is great, or don't read sutras, or we practice by sitting, but don't sit, you don't get meditation and get enlightenment. It's all a practice towards creating that place where we're mindful enough to see the opportunities, where the mindfulness is in itself awakening. And then again, as with the awakening of the physical body, it's not one and done. We keep doing it. That's the practice on the cushion, off the cushion, reading a sutra, re reciting a gatha. We have to keep waking up. I can't speak to what Buddha experienced. I'm obviously not there, but for, for those of us still here working on it and practicing, that's the practice to wake up wherever we are, to take the opportunity and to smile into the face of that opportunity, take a deep breath and just be awake.